Good morning, Tony Dottino. Here we are at the end, or the middle, excuse me, I'm losing my days here. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, another week. And I just keep reading about the things that we can do for our mental fitness. And things we can take control of. And this is the amazing part. <coughs> excuse me, a little froggy here. Uh, Things that we can do to challenge our brains or exercise our brain. And we think of the word exercise, we hear the word exercise, and we immediately think of uh, physical. We're going to go out and run, or we're going to go lift some weights, or we're going to do some crunches, uh, you know, some, some body physical exercises. And what uh, the USA Memory Championship has been all about is how can you show people things we can do for our mental exercises? So... And the, the question becomes, well, what, what are the mental exercises that we can use to continue to strengthen our brain regardless of our age? Which was the whole purpose, as somebody asked me this week, uh, what was the purpose of the USA Memory Championship? And as I started to read about the human brain, and this is now going to be like 30 years I've been at this, and you'll learn a few things if you just pay attention. I tell people even half the time or a quarter of the time, it's amazing what you can learn as the, our, our societies and our science uh, evolves. And one of the things that I continue to see and are part of is the importance of challenging our brain, not in a negative, bad way, but short of just sitting on a couch and watching television or just sitting... And, uh, and being very passive and thinking about well, what can I do to exercise our brain? That was the purpose and the vision. And somebody asked me this week, what was your purpose of starting the USA Memory Championship? And it was to demonstrate to people across the country that there are things that men and women have decided to do to exercise their brain. And the competition brought together a series of events that if you step back and look at everyday life, you would find various applications of what we were putting mental athletes through in the competition. And there we were challenging them to show that they could get better. And one of the benefits we had was we had a number of people that were interested in that and wanted to see their progress. So they came into the competition several years in a row to see what they could do against their peers, but more importantly, against themselves, given that we would give them a structure and a discipline on how to do that. And the benefits have shown for thousands of people, and they go from high school to middle age to we've had seniors that have even competed, that took it upon themselves to learn what some of these skills are that we have in the competition that we found to be generic skills that people would use in everyday life. Example, one of our most popular events is, can you remember, can you do a better job of remembering the names of people that you meet? Maybe there's someone you see at a grocery store, maybe there's someone you see at a doctor's office, maybe it's an assistant at the doctor. I hope you remember the name of your doctor. But maybe there are assistance in the changes that take place in healthcare today. Maybe it's somebody you see that helps you at the, the grocery store, at the deli department, at the meat counter, maybe at produce. And uh, you see people in the store that help you and get you maybe they slice up a loaf of bread or they pick up and get you some cold cuts or help you pick out the best fruit that you may want to have. Well, maybe you able to find something on a shelf and... You want to remember their names. And so are there skills that we can learn? Are there ways that we can improve the way we remember people's names and their faces? So we have an event that we call Names and Faces. It's nothing complicated. And uh, when we used to do this in a uh, uh, seating that we weren't doing virtual because of COVID, we'd give people pictures of 125 people. And they'd have 15 minutes, so time became a matter of practicing the skill to show them that with time and with looking at pictures of people, you could practice your skills and then see how well you would do against the pictures of people that we would put on uh, sheets of nine by uh, nine people on a, on a page. 
Well, that's now become a tea party event, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, but then we call it the tea party. You've met someone, and you want to remember their name, and what do you want to do with that? And I'll come back to that. The second thing, we said, okay, what about numbers? People, phone numbers, addresses of numbers of their balance in their checking account? So let's have an event where people have to remember strings of numbers. And there are, again, skills and disciplines you can learn to retain and recall a, a phone number or an address, or uh, maybe it's a financial interest you've got. Maybe it's your mortgage payments. Maybe it's your, what's in your checkbook balance. Maybe it's you know what the net is of your paycheck. Or in kids, uh, what what numbers do they need to remember in terms of their schoolwork and in terms of their college formulas that we get to learn. So we have a number, an event called you know numbers, and you know it's. Can you remember a string of numbers? And again, you know, when I first started doing this, all my goal was an average person is lucky to get past seven numbers. So I said, gee, I'm going to practice this and try to get to 25. So I learned some skills and techniques so I could teach it to others to get to 25. And I did not wish to expand past 25. I was like never going to be a mental athlete competing. Uh, but I was organizing, gee, what would be events uh, that would be important to people that they might use in everyday life. A third method uh, where we have uh, words, words to remember. We give them a couple of hundred words and they have 15 minutes to remember as many of those as possible. Well, that uses the method of loci, as we call it, loci, loci, uh, or it's also aptly called the Roman room. Well, that would be a technique that we really discovered can be used not just to remember a list, a shopping list, or a list of things to do, or a list of things as you're making your errands during the day that you need to remember that you have errands to complete. But we then subsequently found people that were learning how to take that and apply it against things that they were reading that they needed for policies or professional accreditations or tests in schools. And we found that we could use that method and we could also link it to key points that they wanted to either speak about in a, a meeting they were going to without having to look at notes all the time. But we found that that would also have a benefit to a comprehension of reading material, as well as remembering list of items. And so as we it came about these events and we started to see them and we got the, together with HDNet Television for several years, we wanted to make a stage-friendly event that people at home would, would find as being, wow, that's amazing what they're doing, but gee, how do they do that? That was the question we wanted to provoke. How are they doing that? And so we created a tea party event. And what we did with that is we wanted to, well, what's the name of the person you're meeting at the tea party? Second of all, we're going to put some numbers in there, so can you remember their phone number and maybe an address of where they live? And third off, can you remember a list of things that maybe their favorite hobbies or maybe things that they do for a living? We would give, so we integrated those three and we brought that together in a tea party. So then as people meet people during Christmas or Thanksgiving or Easter or various uh, yeah, annual celebrations, uh, or family gatherings, christenings or blessings or religious uh, time together, people would, wow, I'm meeting someone and I do remember their you know, they want me to contact them. I'm not going to have to just take out my cell phone and say, well, I better put it in here. But you know what? I'm going to listen to their number and I'm going to code it. And then, boy, I'm going to just snap it right off whenever I need it. Uh, I'm going to remember their name. I, I might remember their favorite foods. I remember three of their favorite hobbies. I'm going to now remember some things that are important in the relationship that I want to build with this person that shows I was interested in them. And I wanted to make a personal connection and a personal uh, reference that they knew I cared about them enough to remember their name and maybe a couple of uh, interesting points about their hobbies or th likes in, in their life. And uh, I'd remember a phone number if I needed, hey, I want to give you a call, is that all right? And I got your number, this is it, right? And it was a way to build a connection in a relationship that would have some friendliness and some permanence to it. And so off goes the USA Memory Championship. We are doing our 25th uh, celebration this year. It's, it's, you know, we're excited about it. I scratch my head sometimes and I say, 25 years, where have they gone? 
And almost came in our very first one we did in uh, Manhattan, uh, at the hotel in Manhattan, and thinking about, my goodness, our last couple have been done here in Winter Park, Florida, at Full Sail University, and the evolution of the event over 25 years. Uh, our, our mental athletes that have been our champions, which brings us to an event we will do at uh, MIT in November this year, the, the, the competition of champions. And so it's just been exciting, and uh, it's hard to believe it's 25 years. But I wanted to at least uh, let people know that there are skills that we can learn. That's the whole purpose of the event. Look at people that have taken these skills and applied them. There are things that you can do, and you don't have to become a nerd in the course of doing it. So look at the people that have won the championships, or the people that have even competed. You know, as I say, every person that competes in the event is a winner in the game of life. And that's what uh, we're, we're all about. And I just continue to want to share those messages with people, maybe touch them in some capacity to let them know that there is something that they can do to exercise their brain. And they don't have to get obsessive and crazy about it but that it will make a difference in terms of their long-term uh, mental health and not have to worry about anything else that they need to do in terms of it, but have some fun in the course of processing it. So with that, I am off to New York today. I'm going back up to New York for a little bit of time, and you'll see me on my next broadcast uh, coming from uh, New York. So have a good week. We'll see you on Friday.